This is Cameron Indoor Stadium in Durham, North Carolina, where the Blue Devils are set to face the number eight Demon Deacons of Wake Forest. Already, last second finishes, new stars, and familiar faces. ACC basketball is back for the next three months. The emotion, intensity, focus, and excitement are one of the most storied and competitive conferences across the land. Throw on another log and join us as the ACC puts fire in the dead of winter. Some of the ACC's best and brightest set to go at it from Cameron Indoor Stadium. We'll have the starting lineup, but first, let's go back to Chris and Digger. Mike, thank you. Welcome to our Wednesday ACC doubleheader. Digger Phelps making his first appearance of 1996. We'll be tracking a very busy night of college hoops. The 11 teams in the top 25 are in action. Number one, UMass. Finally playing that game that was postponed by the Blizzard. And our second game tonight, number 10, North Carolina against Georgia Tech. Battle of highly touted freshmen. More on that at halftime of our first game, Wake and Duke. Digger, everybody knows about Tim Duncan. Everybody talks about Tim Duncan, but forget it, Chris. When you like to take a look at Wake Forest, they're number three in the nation in three-point shooting. So, Coach K, you got your hands full inside and outside defense for the Dukies. Most people don't realize Wake that good from the perimeter. Coming up to tip-off, they would love to have Grant Hill back in the Duke uniform. He said he's watching courtside. We'll see you at halftime. ESPN's presentation of NCAA basketball is brought to you by Pizza Hut, home of stuffed crust pizza. From Durham, North Carolina, it's ACC basketball with the number eight team in the country, Wake Forest against Duke. Good evening, everybody. Mike Patrick along with Dan Bonner. It's great to have you with us. Everyone assumed with Mike Krzyzewski back at the helm of the Duke Blue Devils, everything would be business as usual. Well, he's back, but Dan, they're not. Mike, last year when Duke finished 2-14 and 14 in the league, last in the league, they played an awful lot of very close competitive games but lost them at the end. And I think people felt that Mike Krzyzewski would swing those games the other way, even though he can't score any points or get any rebounds. This year, Duke has started out 0-2. They've had close competitive games, but they've lost them. And if Duke is going to contend in the ACC that a lot of people thought they would in preseason, they got to get going now. Be a tough way to get their first win tonight. Let's look at the lineups. First for Wake Forest. 8-1 overall, 1-0 in the ACC under Dave Odom. Ricky Peral, number one in the ACC in three-point shooting, hitting 58.3% of his shots. For Duke under Mike Krzyzewski, 9-4 overall, but 0-2 in the conference. Chris Collins has the shooting touchback. Two years ago, he made more threes than anyone in the ACC, but collapsed last year. One thing Duke fans will notice about the Duke lineup is that uh, Price is not in it. Ricky Price, who has meant quite a great deal to the Duke Blue Devils this season, benched at the start of the game for lack of team play. Mike Krzyzewski is going to put him on the bench and let him watch for a little while. We'll see him later on in the game, however. And Wake Forest controls the opening tip. Rutland immediately goes inside to Duncan over Newton and misses the first shot. Collins with a rebound. A Wojciechowski. So going with a three-guard lineup early. Wojo has been coming off the bench. Newton has been on fire. He's made everything he has put up. Greg Newton leading the ACC, shooting over 72% from the floor. Mike and Newton just took that right at Tim Duncan with an awful lot of confidence, and that's the way Newton has to approach this game tonight. Man-to-man -man defense by the Blue Devils. Some tough matchups. Capel against Peral for one. However, Peral doesn't really go inside that much, so Capel can probably guard him out on the perimeter. The essence of a 6'8 perimeter player. Dangerous pass, and Rutland comes down with it. Well, that's a long shot. Didn't get the roll, but the offensive rebound goes to Stringfellow and back out to Rutland. That's why Stringfellow's in the game, Mike. The Wake Forest coaching staff really feels like he can give them a presence on the board. LaRue can't find his shot. Always looking for Duncan, and now they have him low. Over. Nice J 
job by uh, Tom Z uh, Domzowski, who bodied up against him. Mike, one thing that both times that Duncan has received the ball, he's been out in the high post area and had to basically drive to the basket. They need to get him the ball down on the block. Collins with a pull-up jumper that rattled out on him. 2-0 Duke early. Mike, Wake Forest, not really a team that's going to get out and try to run in transition. They're going to try to work it in the half-court offense and get Duncan involved in the game. You would think they try to post Peral up every once in a while with that huge height advantage. Duncan gets in low, and Newton blocked it. He got the rebound, too. Great help by Domzolski, not letting Duncan get to the basket by himself. Man-to-man -man for Lake Floyd. Capel for three. Air ball. Duncan with another rebound. Now, Capel has his work cut out for him on the offensive end as well, Mike, where Peral is matched up against him defensively. And at 6'9", Peral's an awful big guy to try to shoot the outside shot over top of. Duncan has missed all three shots so far. That means they won't will go back to him, of course. And here's the steal as Duncan makes the bad pass. Collins to Capel. This is Wojciechowski. Nice entry pass to Domsowski. Tries to reverse. And Duncan just casually swatted it away. Duncan is one of the great shot blockers that ever played in this league. And most of the time, he doesn't even bother to leave his feet. And what's great about Duncan is when he blocks the shot, his team usually recovers the basketball. Not a lot of show, just a lot of production from Duncan. He's got three rebounds in the game already. We played three minutes and ten seconds. It's only two to nothing. Again, man-to-man -man defense for Duke. There's the switch. Wojciechowski gets back, but Rutland tries the runner and misses it. Nice effort by Collins. Not only did he get the rebound, but very well aware of where Capel was to get him the ball. Mike Wake Forest not playing very effectively on the offensive end. They're getting the ball to Duncan, but not in positions where he's a, a good scorer. And Dan, it doesn't look like there's very much intensity there right now either for Wake. <laughs> Haven't exactly been lighting it up so far. <laughs> no. Wake Forest, a tremendous defensive team, second in the ACC in field goal percentage defense. Collins Slam. He's out of Lovington, New Mexico, and says there just aren't very many big people out there to play against. He's not <laughs> used to it. We'll get used to it here. LaRue loaded Duncan, and there's Newton reaching over the back. He says the only time he gets in foul trouble is when he gets sloppy on defense. He wasn't sloppy there, he was very aggressive. We've got a timeout on the court, 15.49 to go first half. It is 4-0 Blue Devils. Looks like a third inning score. Duke 4-0 over Wake Forest, but there's 15.49 to go in the first half, Dan. Wake Forest, an excellent defensive team. We talked before the game about the fact that they were the third leading three-point shooting team. Duke at 9 and 4, but they get off to that 0 and 2 start. They are shooting very well from the floor, nearly 49%. There's one of the all time Blue Devils and one of the all time good people to come out of this program. Grant Hill now with the Detroit Pistons, enjoying a rare off night. So, what does he do? Comes back to Duke to see a basketball game. Goes to see a ball game. That's what you like. Wake Forest not very active on offense, and there Duncan throws it away again, and that's uncharacteristic of Tim Duncan. Mike, he's drawn three guys every time. There's got to be people open beyond the three-point line. He's just got to find them. And until the last game, he was the leading assist man for the team, but he has two turnovers. Sean Allen, number 40, comes into the lineup. There's Newton trying to extend his range a little bit. Can't do it, and Duncan grabs the rebound. That's his fourth turn. With Newton shooting as well as he has been lately, Mike Shusef was joking and said he's going to write a chapter in the book called How to Make Your Center Shoot 92%. But Newton shooting has not been from that range, and there's another Wake Forest turnover. Wake Forest just very lackadaisical, and it got Dave Odom off the bench like a rocket. Mike, there's no movement on the offensive end of the floor for the Demon Deacons. Collins whip 
drops a pass inside. Nice catch by Domzowski. Nearly missed him on the return. But Domzowski had the right idea. Had Collins been in the right place, that would have been a three. Shot clock at four. Nice fake by Wojciechowski, but it was a double dribble. Of course, following our game, we have more ACC action coming your way. Number 10, North Carolina, will travel to Atlanta to take on Georgia Tech. And you have to wonder which Yellow Jacket team is going to show up. What a couple of freshmen, though, Mr. Modern. Well, I'll tell you what, you know, they say that adjusting to a power league like the ACC is hard for freshmen. I think <laughs> hard for some freshmen, not those two guys. Saw Antoine Jameson over the weekend. I'm convinced he's a fifth year senior who's had plastic surgery. <laughs> that kid's no freshman. LaRue misses his first shot. Still 4 0 Duke. The shutout extends five minutes and 45 seconds. Collins forced a shot, doesn't get it to rebound to Antonio Jackson out of Aliceville, Alabama, in for the first time. And Wake Forest going with a little bit bigger lineup right now. Jackson comes off the bench. They feel that he can give them a little bit of offense. Another miss. This time by Rutland. The long tip to Wojciechowski. And I think Wake Forest would just take any offense at this point. Love to get a breakaway layup just to get off the schneid. They've gone six minutes and 18 seconds without scoring. Mike, they haven't attacked the basket either, no. so they haven't created any fouling opportunities where they can get to the free throw line. Collins working the top of the circle with Cable. Terrell with that 6'8 frame and a bigger wingspan. Well, but Duncan is out of the game right now, so Cable really ought to look to take the ball past Peral to the basket. And he did, and the shot clocks down to two as he scores. 6 nothing blue devil. There's Duncan sitting on the bench, but as long as Duncan is in the ball game, if Cable gets past Peral on the outside, he's not going to be able to take the ball all the way to the goal. But with Duncan out of the game, look for Cable to take the ball hard to the basket. The jumper by Sean Allen clanks it off their offensive rebound. The foul will be outside. Mike, that might have been one reason for the clank that you saw yeah. is the Carl Hess out there catching Jeff Cable, slapping him on the arm. Dave Odom appearing to be unconcerned on the sideline, but he's got to be concerned with the fact that we've played more than seven minutes and his team hadn't scored. The numbers on Duncan, he's got the four rebounds, and it's wonderful to see that man back on the sidelines. Mike Krzyzewski is great for college basketball, and he was dearly missed not only by this program and the conference, but by the entire country last year. And Wake Forest with 12.51 to go in the half gets its first point as Sean Allen, who's only a 55% free throw shooter, gets his first. started the first seven games now they're bringing him off the bench really trying to play three different guys with that power forward Mike and when you combine all three Jackson and Allen and Stringfellow they get pretty good production Newton wants to bounce the ball down low as Duncan is back in here's the drive by Carmen Wallace and he's fouled on the way in Mike if you're the Wake Forest team of Deacon you obviously want to move your feet to cut down on the penetration but once the guy gets past you, you don't want to follow him on the way to the basket. You do have someone back there who's blocked a shot or two. Yeah. Dave Odom not very happy with what's going on. What a run Dave Odom has had. Three of the last five years, the ACC Coach of the Year. Won the tournament championship last year. Here's Carmen Wallace for free throw line. Spins out the first. And Dan, I know we would agree on this. Uh, it was the greatest single performance by one person that we've ever seen at the ACC tournament, as many as we have gone to. And, and that performance, even though Dave had a good one, that's not the performance you're talking about. Mr. Randolph Children. Yeah. <laughs> the coaches are very important, but when guys that's go out right. and have the kind of performance like Randolph had in the ACC tournament, yeah, Dave's makes a the great coach looks a lot better. Dave's a great coach, but he didn't light it up three days in a row. <laughs> This one's knocked out of bounds by Capel. It's seven to two, Duke. Wake Forest has not made a field goal in this game. Duke doing a great job keeping pressure on Tim Duncan there. <laughs> Newton sort of butts him while the ball goes out of bounds. Jerry Brass 
Boswell is in for the first time. Here's what Peral does best. The long-range shooting, but he misses and Carmen Wallace rips one down. Duke doing a tremendous job blocking out so far, Mike. Wake Forest missing shots, and they're not getting second and third opportunity. Capel had to change the arc, but Duke gets the follow. Mike, that is just surprising, Pete. That's the downside of Duncan having to come and help out. If, his, if the guy he's guarding smart gets to the board, he's going to get some opportunities, and Newton made a very heads-up play right there. Nine to two. Braswell gets it inside. It's Sean Allen with a jump hook. The first field goal and nine tries for the deep. And that might not be a bad place for Wake Forest to go because you know they're not going to double team Allen because he might pass it to Duncan. And they certainly have the height advantage inside. And here is a There's foul. Brawl. Brawl reached in. That's not a good foul because he wasn't in position to make a steal or draw a charge. Just picks up a silly foul. It's his second person. 11.29 to go in the first half. Nine for Duke. Duke leads it by five. And when we talk about standing around on offense, watch as the ball goes inside to Duncan. Duncan draws a lot of attention, but everybody from Wake just sort of stand in there watching, and the result is a turnover. When your guy inside is going to draw that much attention, people have to move themselves and get in position to score. Wake has not been doing that, and that's why their field goal shooting is so horrible. They're not getting in good position to shoot the ball, even though the attention Duke is devoting to Duncan ought to be able to give them some opening. They're hitting a crisp 11%. Wojciechowski takes the inbounds pass. Ricky Price is checked in for Mike Krzyzewski. Newton very aggressive that time, overly so, and misses the short jump. Well, it's not many guys are just going to turn around and shoot it in Tim Duncan's face. Duncan wheels into the lane, had to alter the shot because of Newton's defense. And Duncan lost another great play by Collins, who is very poor to wear. Well, you just wait till the big guy dribbles the ball, and then you take it from him. Bryce gets it low to Newton, kicks it back to Wallace for three. Mike Duncan. Wallace has made nine of 18, and it looked like Duncan got hit in the face. Mike, the reason that Duke had that opportunity was because Duncan was very slow getting up the court. The ball went inside to Newton. Allen had to drop down and cover Newton, and that left Wallace all alone. Duncan looks like he's all right. His team isn't right now. They're down 12 4. That's easy for you to say, Mike. You didn't just get hit in the nose. <laughs> Rutland throws it right to Price. And Price loses it to Braswell. Braswell loses it back to Price. That's an offensive foul on Price. Well, nobody wanted the ball. Mike, the Duke Blue Devils have come out here, and they're playing very, very aggressively. There's good movement both of the ball and of the people on the offensive end of the court for Wake Forest. Up to this point in the game, it's been the guy with the ball playing and the other four guys standing around watching. That's why they have six turnovers. Dave Odom gets Rusty LaRue back in for Tony Rutland, and here's pressure by Duke. And Wake Forest has really played a lot of guys here in the first half of the first half. I think Dave Odom keeps looking for any combination that might start to click. Nobody's found a rhythm yet. Wake has not played poorly on defense, Mike. I mean, good heavens, you hold the team 12 points in the first quarter. The first half. There's another blocked shot by Newton. Newton has been incredible, and finally Duncan gets the roll. Newton even got a piece of that one. Mike, but Wake Forest is not going to have success like that. And there's the steal by Braswell. Duncan, Newton right in front. Clobbered from behind by Wallace. Tim Duncan does this on his own, and as Duncan struggles with the basketball, his Wake Forest teammates are going to stand and watch. There's nobody else in your picture for Wake Forest. Still nobody in your picture. Nobody coming to the ball. Finally, Duncan shoots the ball. The whole Duke team is standing around him, and there's nobody for Wake who's open so he can throw him the ball. Uh, Tim Duncan, a consensus All-American and many people's choices, the player of the year in college basketball, but uh, very difficult to play one on five and win. Misses the first free throw. 
free throw shooting is down from last year. Here are the numbers on Duncan. Fourth in the ACC in scoring, first in rebounds and blocked shots. And in field goal percentage, he is third, even though he is a marked man. Mike, and you're right about Duncan's field goal percentage. He's down to 68 and a half this year, and he really needs to get that up higher because he's going to get a lot of opportunities from the line. Missed them both. 12-6 Blue Devils. We're under 10 minutes to go in the half. Mike Patrick, Dan Byer, our ESPN crew with you from Durham. Glad you could join us for the ACC. Capel and Collins haven't been able to get on track. Here's a tough pass. Nice catch. Mike, he has caught the ball well inside. That's a couple of times now. You said nice catch when he's been fielding a real tough one. Learning to play a more physical style of basketball. He has four points. The lead grows to eight. Mike, the ever created Duke students are champion Marcus Cambridge. Oh, yeah. That was not a good memory for Wake Forest. That block was by Domzowski. Duke really playing some superb defense tonight. Collins for three. Just nicked the rim with the long rebound to kick. So one thing about the three-point shots, you don't get the traditional rebound. You get the long kicks. Now, Wojciechowski going to hold the ball for a little while. Not very long. He's only got 35 seconds. And <laughs> yeah, not like the old days. Collins with a runner. And, Dan, it looks like Collins certainly has his confidence back, which disappeared last year. You can understand why it disappeared yeah. last year, Mike. And the young man, for him to come back and play so well this year, says a lot about his character. Throw this one right through the hands of Sean Allen. Duke has its biggest lead and looks for more. Mike Krzyzewski calls out the play to Woja. Sounds a little bit more like a Duke crowd right now. Well, the students are back, Mike. Capa all alone for three. How many times have you seen a player hesitate and not make it? Very rarely, Mike, you see a player hesitate and make it. Duncan clobbered. They're going to get Newton, I believe. That'll be two on Greg Newton. Fifteen foul against Duke. Wake has committed only two. Duncan still working hard to get the ball. And once he gets it in there, you can see Duke coming. There's Dumzalski and Newton. Tim Duncan. Newton looks like he's got an apple there. He's chewing on <laughs> Mike, the problem right there, if you're going to stop Duncan, you've got to get him when he starts that dribble. You get, Once he wheels to the basket, Domzolski's not going to be able to do very much except foul. Well, Dan, what he's been chewing on tonight is an All-American. He's been no, eating him up. Absolutely. Duncan now one out of three at the line. It's 16-7. Newton out of Niagara Falls, Ontario, has just played brilliantly for Duke, a team that desperately needed his presence inside, and he's given it to them. He's got four points. Four rebounds and two blocked shots against Duncan. 7.51 to go in the first half. Duke against number eight, Wade Forrest, leading 16-8. Duke by eight. When Mike Krzyzewski came back too quickly from back surgery last year and worked himself uh, into a frenzy and out of the game of basketball, he said his mother, who was uh, in her early 80s, called and said I know you probably won't have time to talk to me but and he said he sat down and thought about that and cried and said you know I must be an idiot and I think last year really gave that man who was very sensitive to his players and his family a different perspective and he has pledged Dan that he is never going to do it again he's got everything in order well Mike I've always found that if I don't have time to talk to my mother I better make it <laughs> Duke in control from the very beginning. Behind the back pass. Domzowski with a left-hand jump hook. Duke may have gotten a little too fancy for its own good on that possession. Well, the point is, Mike, that they had, when they drew the defense, they had somebody in scoring position, and they found the guy. Domzowski, I think, was a little surprised, not by the fact that he received the pass, but by the angle from which it came. Graswell couldn't get the shot. Shot. Wake Forest has only attempted one three-point shot in this game. They're averaging 19 a game. Cross-court pass to Peral. He goes low. Jackson puts it up. Duncan offensive rebound. Bounces out. Duncan again. Offensive foul. Yes. There must be a lid on it because
because it certainly won't go in. That time, at least, Dan, they had some ball movement on offense. Mike, they got the ball down low, and Allen took the shot. There's a great effort by Wallace, forces Duncan to miss. This is great hands by Duncan. What great hands to catch the ball. He leans in with that shoulder. I think he was actually off balance. Now he's disgusted because he thinks that's a three-point play, and they call it the other way. 16-8 Blue Devils, six minutes, 22 seconds, and counting here in the first half. Now Duke really spreading the court on the offensive end. They're going to try to use their quickness in the three-guard offense to attack on the inside. You, know, you beat them out on the perimeter and get to the basket. Whistle away from the ball, had a moving screen on Domzowski. That's his first. If you join this late, it hasn't been pretty. Wake Forest has hit only two out of 15 shots. They've only tried one three-point field goal, and they've turned it over seven times. Dave Odom must be going crazy. His team's played 14 minutes. He has eight points. Here's the foul on Wojciech or Wojciechowski kicked it. Mike, one of the things that they're not doing, and I think you hit the nail right on the head with that, only one three-point attempt. They're getting the ball inside to Duncan. They're really forcing it in there. But then the guys aren't lining up beyond the three-point arc in positions where Duncan can find them. Duke doing an excellent job on the defensive end. Duncan has hit only one out of seven. Rutland picked up his dribble, was in trouble, got rid of it. Now you, you, we're, stand, we're sitting up here and we're talking about how Wake's not moving on offense, but Duke with some great position defense has something to do with that. Shot clock at three. Duncan 20 feet away from the basket, tries a fallaway three-pointer. Didn't hit the rim and the ball will go over to Duke. And Dave Odom is just going up and down his bench, pointing at reserve, saying, all right, you get in there and try it. I mean, there is a wealth of three-point shooters on this team, and Rusty LaRue will come in to try this one. But Mike Krzyzewski's squad is finding the three-point shooters, and they're not letting them have the three-point shot. They're 0 for 2 from three-point range. Capel, pull up, jumper, nailed it. Mike, and that's a shot that's going to be available. If you beat your guy out on the perimeter, you don't want to take it all the way to Duncan. That little 12 to 15-foot shot is going to be there for Duke. Capel has four. Wojciechowski on Rutland. Pull-up jumper. Doesn't get the roll. There's the offensive rebound, and Domzowski is going to pick up his second personal foul. So both of the big guys have two. Coming up tomorrow on ESPN, Minnesota against number 20, Penn State. Yes, it's basketball. Number 20, Penn State, followed by number three, Kansas, against Florida. Then after Sports Center, you'll see Southern Illinois and Utah State. That's a midnight Eastern start. Penn State's basketball team really upgraded in the last few years. Mike, and a lot of the credit for that Penn State success goes to the fellow who's no longer the coach there, Bruce Parker. Absolutely. And we're getting a look at Taman Dumzalski on the bench, but Bruce Parkhill, one of college basketball's classiest acts, gave up the coaching job, is in athletic administration up there at Penn State. But you talk about the lessons that Mike Krzyzewski learned. Well, Bruce Parkhill decided to give it up for, you know, so he could spend a yeah. little bit more time personally as well. He took that program out of the dark ages. Oh, he in sure did. Basketball. Absolutely. 18-10, Blue Devils in control, 4-49 and counting here in Durham. Bruce Parkhill did it in a couple of different leagues. He did it in the Atlantic 10, and then they went into the Big 10, and he did it there, too, and there for all, it's another foul. That's three on Ricky Peral, and all of them have been fouls because he didn't move his feet. He reached out with an arm to try to grab somebody. Braswell will have to come back in. Peral did a tremendous defensive job against Florida State's James Collins. But one of the things that he's got to be able to do, he's big out there, but he's not as quick as most of the guys he's guarding. He's got to move his feet, and when he gets beat, he can't reach that hand in there. Oh, wow. a runner by Price. They need his athleticism in there. Duke has always had one of those wing players who can really go to the rack. And Rusty LaRue did a pretty good defensive job. That was just a great offensive move. 20 to 10, Duke. Trying to avoid going 0-3 in the conference. Wake it like to get a little two-man game going. Now he's got to find Rutland. 
Rutland for three, missed it, Newton with another rebound. Mike, that didn't go in the basket, but that's what Wake Forest has been lacking. That two-man game where the outside player tosses it into Duncan and then moves in position for the three. They shoot well enough that those will go in. Now you talk about some guy just being able to get to the basket. Rusty LaRue moves his feet. He's in front of him. He gets some help there from Braswell. That's just a great offensive move. You're not going to stop that. Twenty-two to ten as Capel has half a dozen. The crowd jumping up and down as Duke has its biggest lead of the night, and Duncan turns it over again. Mike, what an effort by Wallace playing in front of Duncan, Newton playing behind, so if they lob it over, Duke can get it. Great team defense and a 12-point lead for Duke. Duke leads it by 12. Wake's offense really struggling, and one of the things they need to do is get the inside-outside game going. This is a great defensive job as Duke drops down, but you notice Rutland's open because Wallace dropped down inside to help. Rutland missed that particular shot, but that's the first real clean look that Wake Forest has had at a three-point shot. They're 0 for 5 tonight. They come in shooting 46% from three-point range. Dan was just sit here, uh, sitting here doing his math during the timeout and tells me that Wake Forest is on a 24-point pace in this game. We're going to have to go back in the record books if this keeps up. Newton had it knocked away. Nice play by Duncan. Wake Forest struggles have been on the offensive end. They're doing a nice job on the defensive end. They've got to get the ball to go in the basket. Duke has had big leads in its first two ACC games and lost them both. Not only the lead, but the game. Braswell scores to cut it to 10. Duncan did a nice job just standing inside right there. You know, you figure Braswell to dump it off to Duncan, and so everybody guards Duncan, and Braswell takes it right to the goal. Bryce works into the walk. He walks. Did that little hop just before he started, and if you're Duke, Mike Krzyzewski getting the timeout right now. I saw a couple a things in a row he didn't like. Well, it's, it's, it's a perfect opportunity to use the 20-second timeout. He doesn't want his team turning the ball over and losing the lead. In the last three minutes of the half, you don't want to have Wake Forest go on a run. Well, my partner is a man of many hats. He puts on the play-by-play -play hat on Friday night as number 13 NC State goes against number 8 Virginia in women's college basketball on the deuce Friday at 7.30. I will uh, I will tune in and listen to that one, sir. Well, Mike, I'm looking forward to that ball game. I'm also looking forward to the fact that maybe I can get my car out of the Charlottesville <laughs> airport where it's been for the last 10 days. The turnover story, Wake had the huge lead in that department early, but Duke has turned it over a couple of times in a row to even it up. Duke now showing 2-3 zone. Mike Krzyzewski changing up during the timeout. Wallace trying to find Duncan. Nice entry pass. Duncan got by Newton for the easy one. Duncan has such great hands. You can throw the ball up there, and you know he's going to get it. Six points on the night for Duncan. The lead to eight. Boy, Capel just exploded. He'll draw the foul. Capel got away with one there, going all the way to the basket. Jackson not in good defensive position, but Wallace playing in front of Duncan, and Newton gets over. But they just throw the ball over top of Newton and Duncan with the dunk. Jackson picks up the last foul. It's his first. And Capel will go to the line, nearly a 79% free throw shooter. If Jackson doesn't try to step in, Duncan blocked that shot. And that's what I was talking about. Capel, once he gets by his man on the perimeter, he'd be much better off stopping and shooting the short jump. Tim Duncan, uh, not very impressive when you look at the scoring, but even though he hasn't looked good, he's got nine rebounds in the first half where his team is still in the game, even though they have only 14 points. Mike, he's got six of the 14 points. He's done the yeah. focal point of their offense. And even though Duncan may not look very emotional, he keeps it all inside. He plays just as hard as he can all the time when he's out there. He's truly a magnificent player. Wallace 
just standing in front of Duncan. Wallace is not even looking anywhere else. He's just standing in front of Duncan with his hands up in the air, and that means somebody's got to be open, and LaRue was that time. Rusty LaRue wide open, buried the three. The lead cut to seven. Collins kicks it back to Wojo. I don't know when I've ever seen anybody try to guard another player the way Wallace was guarding Duncan. Newton tries to lean in. In the last couple of times he's been aggressive, Duncan has just swatted it away from him. Here's a foul on the drive, and Wallace looks like he's doing is what NFL defensive backs do now. They don't look at the quarterback, just at the receiver. <laughs> well, the problem with that is you focus so much, and here's Newton trying to turn to the basket, and he's you're just not going to have very much success if you're Newton. I'm sure he'd like to draw the foul, but Duncan, watch the job Duncan does. Doesn't knock the swing his arm down, just gets his wrist and taps it out of the way. His team gets the ball. Newton would like to have that one back. Free throw spins out. Carmen Wallace with the rebound. Duke still by seven. Mike, as poorly as Wake Forest has played in this first half on offense, they're only down by seven points. Dan, you would think the way they have played, the turnovers, the missed opportunities, they could be down by 20 and out of the game. Absolutely. team as good as Wake Forest hang around when you've got a chance to beat them. You have a problem in the second half. Well, Mike, Wake Forest is a great defensive team, and their defense is keeping them in the game right now. Wallace with a miss. Now they've got a four on two. Boy, Duncan, one of the other things he does, he really runs the floor. Hustles down there. Here's Rutland for three. They've hit two in a row from outside and cut the lead to four. Those, they're not going to miss those threes on no. Come in shooting 46.2% from three-point range. Number one in the ACC, number three in the country. And now their defense looks a little more aggressive, Mike. You have some success on offense that helps ah. the defense. Capel tries to answer. Domzowski had a rebound, but knocked it out of bounds. Coming up on the Delta Fawcett Halftime Report. Undefeated Clemson goes against Virginia. Number one, UMass is in action. And we'll take a look at the Knicks and the Nets with 28.9 seconds to go here in the first half. And Dave Odom has just used his 20-second timeout. And this is one of the areas where coaches can use these things effectively. You still have your 20-second. You want to make sure you get a good shot going down to the end of the half. Call the 20-second timeout set something up. Being a former coach, I assume you like the 20-second? As a coach, I do, yes. I think the 20-second timeout helps a coach, particularly the way I've seen coaches use it, is in situations like this where you want to get a good shot, but you don't want to spend the whole timeout. And so if you can save it this long, the other time I've seen coaches use it is calling a timeout just to sort of settle the team down to stop another team's run. The numbers on Tim Duncan, six points, nine rebounds. Wake Forest has hit its last four shots after starting 0 for 8. Wojciechowski gets nailed on the screen. Rutland right down the lane. It's a two-point game. And again, Mike, Duncan was a key factor in that play because you can't help off Duncan. Duke will get the last shot. when he was laying on the ground, and that's why Dave Odom has exploded off the bench. That ball hit Chris Collins while he was laying out of bounds. It ought to be Wake's ball and not Duke's. And he is beside himself, and he's got he's got a legitimate gripe. Well, that's true, but Dick Paparo doesn't see it that way, so Dave better pipe down. Capel trying to get the shot off, and now here comes the foul on a three-point shot, and Dave Odom is going to light up like a Christmas tree now. But Dave Odom does not want to get a technical oh, foul. He is lighting up like a Christmas tree. They are going to say it's a two-point shot. Six on the table. Going to the line with two shots. Jeff Payton. But if you saw that play, the ball came down. It did not hit the floor. It hit Collins first while he was prone on the floor. And now Cable, with no time on the clock, will shoot the free throw. Dave Odom's already got to be saying, hey, look, guys, we're not playing that well. I don't need you helping them. Capel hits them both. Duke takes the lead 26 to 22. That's our story at halftime. Right now, let's
Let's go back to the studio. Chris Fowler and Digger Phelps. Gentlemen. Guys, thanks. Set for calling Wake. What a great shooting team Rusty they are. Rusty LaRue hit the three. He knew Duke was in trouble. They didn't have a bigger lead when uh, Wake Forest went more than seven minutes without a point. Coming up on our Delta Fawcett halftime report, more action in the ACC. An equally slow start for Virginia and Clemson. That game is coming up as the Tigers try to stay unbeaten. And number one UMass in action in Atlantic 10 play. Stick around. Scores and highlights coming up. ESPN's presentation of NCAA basketball is brought to you by Cadillac and your Cadillac dealers. Finally, those shots were falling. Wake back within four at the break. ESPN's presentation of NCAA basketball is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? Score updates, Hoyas and Pitt tied Virginia leading Clemson. Virginia's won seven straight games against Clemson. They always hold them to poor shooting percentages. Virginia Tech still trailing by four to Duquesne, Purdue leading. Gene Katie going after his third straight Big Ten championship without Robinson, without Quanzo Martin, and Waddell. I thought you had Penn State winning that conference. <laughs> Back to Mike and Dan. All right, thank you, Chris. It's 26-22 at the half here. Duke over Wake Forest. Mike Patrick and Dan Bonner, glad to have you back with us. I'd like to say it was a great defensive battle in the first half, but I can't quite bring myself to do that. <laughs> well, it was definitely not an offensive struggle, so it, we're going to say it's a defensive struggle, but really we've seen Duke in particular do a great job on the defensive end of the court. You've got to shut off the kinds of things that Tim Duncan could do. What we've got here circled is Greg Newton on the left and Carmen Wallace on the right. This is what we mean by having someone play in front and someone play behind. Number 34 in white, Wallace gets around in front. Newton not really guarding anybody, just standing behind Tim Duncan, making it difficult to lob over the top, so they try to make the bounce pass. It gets away. Duncan was not able to recover it. Now, Tim Duncan did get the ball inside, but he draws a big crowd, double teamed right there. Greg Newton not only blocks the shot, but takes it away. Here again, you, there's like four white shirts around him. Tries to pass it inside instead of to beyond the three-point arc and lost the ball. Newton train, uh, playing with tremendous emotion. Duke out shooting Wake Forest in the first half. Three-point field goals. Keep in mind, Wake Forest, one of the best teams in the nation. They tried only seven, made only two. By the half, they are out rebounding Duke, but they have committed two more turnovers in this ballgame. Mike, I think an important stat that's not there is the time at which those turnovers occurred. Wake Forest had six of those nine very early in the half, and one of the reasons that the Deacons offense got in a little bit of gear was because they stopped turning the ball over. I think one of the reasons that Duke struggled the last couple minutes of the half is because Newton had to sit down with a couple of fouls. And Newton just really, he cracked Ricardo Peral in the face, and he's going to pick up a foul right away. Picks up his third, 11 seconds into the second half, the last thing Mike Krzyzewski wanted to see. Scoring in the first half, only one player for either team in double figures. That's Jeff Papel. He has 10. This is Rutland working on Wojo. Duncan got the ball in a good place that time, and Newton couldn't stop it. For the first time, Newton left Duncan to help out somebody else, and you can see what happens when he does that. Wake Forest goes right to Duncan, and he scores easily. Duncan has eight. The lead is cut to two. Duke had his chance to get a lot of breathing room early. Couldn't quite do it. He may come back to haunt them. Capel, nice move down the lane. Now, as I said, Capel cannot take the ball all the way to the basket. He should pull up and shoot. And then Wojo comes back and throws a body block at Rusty LaRue, who's been used to getting them as the Wake Forest quarterback. He's been hit a lot harder than that. Watch Newton here as he starts to leave to try to help out Wojo. And as a result, Duncan is all alone for the easy two. And then Capel has really done a great job getting to the basket. What a great quick step out there. Duncan, here's the double team. Gets it to Ricky Peral short on his three. The number one three-point shooter in the ACC, 58%. He was so surprised that that was available, I think, Mike. That's what they needed to do, and obviously you get to halftime with a coach like Dave Odom to figure that out. Newton backing in on Duncan, tried to use the rim to protect the ball. Duncan still got a piece. 
And you notice he wasn't up off his feet, flailing with his arm, totally in control. For a guy who blocks so many shots, it's just amazing that he doesn't get in foul trouble. Great catch by Peral. He missed the shot. Allen with the foul. Peral knocked it out of bounds. Well, excuse me, last touch by Duke. Peral was matched up against Wojciechowski, so Wojo just with much too big a mountain to climb. He actually did a pretty good job. Peral didn't score. That's Wojo all about 5'10", trying to guard Peral. He's only a foot tall. So Duke has a four-point lead and the ball. But Mike, as you correctly pointed out before the game, Peral really a perimeter player. You have a great step. Well, he's made 21 out of 36 three-point shots this year. He's made three out of four free throws. <laughs> four. I think a guy who makes more three-pointers than free throws is definitely a perimeter guy. Capable with a long miss. Collins with a runner. He likes that shot and got the roll. And that's a good shot for Collins because he can shoot that after he gets past his man and before Duncan can get there. Puts it up with that nice dead action, too, and gets the roll over the front of the rim. 30 24 Blue Devils. Duncan, a lot of contact, no whistle. Bodies going everywhere. Duncan gets his 10th. Well, it's amazing that Duncan can get to the basket. I mean, he's got <laughs> yeah. three guys. A little traffic in there. <laughs> 10 points, 10 rebounds. Your typical double-double with 17-23 to go in the game. We're all now matched up against Collins. <laughs> got by him. Newton with a good screen. They try to get it to Domzowski. Knocked out of bounds. Out to Duke. Tim Duncan starting to assert himself. Look how much attention he draws. He just slides through three guys. And you know, a guy his size is able to slide like that. It's almost ought to be illegal. Domzowski got clobbered on that. Capel with a long miss. Peral with a rebound. Domzowski never really established good position. He was lucky to get a foul call. Got it down to Sean Allen. Missed a shot. Got it back. Knocked away. LaRue. Duncan keeps it alive. Saved by Capel. Wow, what a great play by Capel, Mike. He looked before he threw the ball. He made sure that he was going to find one of his own teammates before he passed it inbound. If he throws that just a little bit off target, Duncan has it and goes in for an easy slam. And it just appeared that if Capel couldn't find somebody, he was perfectly willing to just land with the basketball and let the defense get set. Absolutely right. Here's Collins again down the lane with a scoop shot. Duncan says, who me? He's going to be called for the foul. Number two on Tim Duncan. He's not used to hearing that whistle blow with number 21 following him. Collins trying to get to the basket. Duncan, he got the foul called, Mike, I think, because he swung the arm down. And Collins forced him to swing the arm down by taking the ball down low. You won't see Duncan swing that arm very much or very often. Collins, 74% free throw shooter. Last year, he had a broken bone in his foot. The first day of practice, had to have surgery, came back probably too early, and just couldn't throw it in the Atlantic Ocean after that. <laughs> Collins has six to lead. He's back to six. LaRue gets it quick with a rough up, up to Peral. Duncan will try for three. Rebound to Domzowski. He's been very tonight. He's been a very important part of Duke's game plan. Mike, I'm really impressed with the way the Blue Devils have come out at the start of the second half. Wake Forest definitely was on a run headed into the locker room, and Duke seems to have weathered the score. He's going to pick up the foul that time. He nearly rode Duncan right down the street to Chapel Hill. Tomzowski gets his third. So Newton and Tomzowski both have three, and there is no depth on this Blue Devil team for frontline player. When you're trying to defend a guy like Duncan and defend him aggressively, guys are going to get five. Duke's defense on the perimeter has been very good, Mike. Just not a lot of openings out there for the team to beat. Rutland open for three as Wojo went for the double team and he buried it. Rutland has eight points. It's 32-29. And the three-point shot has gotten late back in this game. Did you see the way Duncan orchestrated that play? Yes, he told sir. Rutland to go over there and just pitched him the ball. Newton trying to make Duncan work on the other end. Jump hook spins out on him. Jeez, Duncan, he gets his hand on the ball and then controls it. 
controls the right word. The young man knows exactly what he can do and doesn't try to go outside. That one is blocked by Domzowski. That's a heck of a play, too. Newton running the floor with Duncan back, stolen by LaRue, and he throws it away. Well, some really nice athletic plays there. Collins all the way, and it's taken away by Duncan, and he saw that coming the whole way. Collins was trying to do the wraparound pass, and Duncan just stepped in, and it looked like Collins, he was a quarterback, yep. handed it off handed to Duncan. Off. Put it right in Duncan's stomach. If it had been LaRue, you'd have thought he forgot which sport he was playing. 14-37, <laughs> Duncan will try another three. I think that that's probably the last three he's going to try tonight. He's 0 for 3 now, I think that's enough. Dave Odom is a little shorter than Duncan, but he might go up after him if he tries one more of those babies. He has that sort of guilty look on his face, doesn't he? Well, he came into the game hitting three of seven, and really, uh, you know, a guy that's going to get 12, 14 rebounds a game, you don't want him at the top of the circle. You got enough three-point shooters on this team. That's right. You want the guys who can make the three shooting yeah. the three. Capel, Wojciechowski travels with three on the shot clock, and Duke turns it over again. We've got a timeout. 14 02 to go in the game. Duke continues to lead Wake Forest. MCI takes us to Pittsburgh Civic Arena where Alan Iverson Digger, annoyed that you didn't make him Pizza Hut Player of the Week, is out to show you something. Yeah, but he was nominated. Watch, he goes right through Pitt's defense. Ralph Worrell has got to work on this. <laughs> Boys in the early going it was close, still close. 39 apiece. Back at a Duke. Mike? All right, thanks, Chris and Digger. 32 29, Duke by three. Mike Jaminski, one of the great players in the history of Duke basketball. Back to, uh, whoa, didn't have the earring when he played here, did he? <laughs> well, see, Mike Jaminski, one of the great players in Duke basketball history, but he didn't play for Mike successfully, so he's sitting under the basket. <laughs> Grant Hill gets behind the bench. Yes, sir. But what a catch by Duncan, my goodness! That was very close to being tipped on the rim by two players. They get the tip, the lead is cut to one. Jackson gets the tip right there, and that's what you need to do. Duncan attracts so much attention, get to the basket, good things will happen. Duke has blown leads in its first two ACC games and lost them both. Ricky Price, who was benched for not playing Duke-like basketball, has come off the bench in the first and second half and really slashed his way to a couple of big baskets. Peral, nice pass to Duncan, who didn't put it up right away, nearly cost him something in the basket. Didn't put it up right away, but didn't put it down yep. either, and kept his pivot foot. That's just a real good play, making sure, checking all the options before you execute one of them properly. Guy really plays under control. Capel gets the screen from Collins, backs away from it. 12.44 to go in the game. Duke has led from the start. Their lead down to a tenuous one. Capel with a miss. Collins, good hustle to get the rebound. Price for three. No. Well, that was a three-pointer over Tim Duncan. Jackson with the rebound. Now Rutland will set it up. It's hard to believe that Wake Forest can take the lead. I'm sure that's exactly what Mike Krzyzewski's feeling right now. Of course, for Dave Odom, we're happy to report that with 33 points, Wake Forest has exceeded their low <laughs> game in history, which was 28 points against Furman in 1947. We wondered for a while. Braswell with a miss. Newton with another rebound. Seven boards for Greg Newton. Man-to-man -man defense. Nice cut by Cable to get free, but look at Duncan come out to help. Price, this is what he does best. Off balance shot. Didn't get the great tip by Cable. Holy cow, did he get him? What a tip by Cable. And Duke desperately needed that basket. Cable has 14. Duncan gets called for the foul, pushing against Wallace. You can certainly understand the way Wallace has been guarding and why you'd want to push him. Dave Odom is not happy with that particular call. That's three on Duncan. That matches Newton and Domzowski. Still a three-point lead. 
Duke leads by three over eighth ranked Wake Forest with 11.26 to go in the game. There's a young man who will not play this year, Trajan Langdon, the third leading scorer a year ago out of uh, the great state of Alaska, suffered a stress reaction above his knee, had nothing to do with the joint itself, but he will be a medical redshirt this year and come back next season. Mike, he hasn't even practiced since that injury, no. so that's how serious the injury was. Of course, for Duke's sake, that's where their strength is in the backcourt. This is Wallace. Nice dish to Newton. Double clutch and got it. Boy, he knew where Tim Duncan was all the time that play. But now, with Duncan with three personal fouls, maybe it's time to attack him in there. Wallace has six. And he'll go against Newton. Graswell picked it up, nearly lost it to Price. Now he does lose it. Jump ball situation. We're on the other side of the possession arrow. He'll go no back to Wake. Wake Forest came out in a zone defense after the timeout. The penetration, and then Newton sees where Duncan is and gets underneath the basket. Little horse shot right there. Really does a nice job protecting the basketball from Duncan. And you know, we talked about Tim Duncan, but when you combine Newton and Domzalski tonight, Mike, Duncan with 12 points, 11 rebounds, and three blocks, Newton and Domzalski combined 10 points, 12 rebounds, four blocks. They're competitive with Tim Duncan. We should get the scores at 10, 30, and 50 on ESPN. Corral for three. He has been ice cold tonight. A lot of contact. Ball knocked out of bounds. It'll be out to Wake, and the crowd wanted to foul on Corral in the collision with Wojciechowski. Mike, and I think that Corral is a guy who has to score for Wake Forest if they're going to, or they're going to struggle on offense. That was proven against UMass, and again tonight, Corral not producing offensively. Wake really struggled. Dan, exactly what I was thinking about the UMass game. He seems to be shooting the same way and being a total non-factor. He's had an opportunity to make a couple of other shots and not taking them. Rutland for three. Boy, that's a big basket. Rutland has 11. The lead is cut to two as we approach 10 minutes. And Rutland is one of those kids, Mike, who I think has really matured from last year to this year. Price, tough shot, won't go. Rebound to Duncan, knocked away. Wallace tried to keep it alive. Nice play by Jackson. Antonio Jackson has hustled when he's had his opportunity. He has six rebounds tonight. Wake with a chance to tie or take the lead. Rutland's got a lot of Randolph Childress in him. I'm not comparing their individual talent, but he's got that same mental toughness. Well, I Boy, think the fans that, don't like that call either. Well, the fans don't like it any time. They point <laughs> any other way other than the white. Especially here. <laughs> no, I think when you call a color other than white, the fans get upset just about anywhere. Now, one thing that Duncan has to be careful about is Wake throws the ball away again. Lots of times when you're in foul trouble, you get that deadly force foul on offense, not on defense. Capel goes to the left hand. He will draw the foul on Braswell. Coming up Saturday on ESPN, a lot more college basketball coming your way. Maryland against these same Demon Deacons of Wake Forest at noon. Then St. Peter's and Manhattan go at it at 2 o'clock. Saturday night, Marquette against number four Cincinnati. The Bearcats with a 9.30 start. Then number 13, Utah goes against Hawaii. That's midnight Eastern. Mike, even for a guy like Tim Duncan, you can be more careful on defense. You can elect to not make plays on defense. But for some reason, on offense, guys don't have the same kind of caution. So Duncan needs to watch the offensive foul just as much as the defensive foul. Capel perfect at the line tonight. Five out of five, 15 points. Ah! Missed that one. The rebound to Jackson. Capel has really upgraded his floor game this year. Last year, he just had a terrible time protecting the basketball. The lead is three with 9.24 a lot of that has to do with decision making. It wasn't the people were picking his pocket, and there's Rutland again. Rutland is the guy with a hot hand. We're tied at 39. Rutland has 14. Mike, you know, you made the Randolph Childress comparison, and those were two Childress like threes right there under pressure. Except you had to wait to see if they were going to go in with Childress. You didn't have to wait. <laughs> 
Hazel really asking for the ball down inside against Braswell. Braswell will be called with the hold on the way in. Mike, we were talking about Capel before. A lot of turnovers last year. It wasn't the guys were coming up and just taking the ball from him. Capel was attacking the basket and wasn't making very good decisions about when to shoot, when to pass, and to whom to pass the ball. And this year, his decision making is so much better, and I think that's where that extra year of maturity has to help. Sure. Price is in there with Wallace. Or Jahaski in the penetration. Back to Price nearly lost. Price. Oh, my. Came at a big time, too, after Wake had come back to tie. Well, Ojahowski better get in Rutland's jersey. Rutland has hit four out of seven threes. Jackson with a leaner. Rebound and up. Excellent defense. Response after it's 39 all, Duke explodes for the next two, and Dave Otto wants a timeout. It's a 20 second. Dan, I don't want to draw too many comparisons, but this is what Duke used to do with that great run of Final Fours under Mike Krzyzewski. They responded. And you can see the intensity on Mike Krzyzewski's face. He's trying to transfer that intensity to over to his kids. Price just takes the ball to the basket, slides by Duncan, uses his body to protect the ball. I think he fooled Duncan with which hand he was going to shoot the ball. And then Collins with an excellent look down the court. Wallace has been doing a great job defensively. And Collins has always been a good guy for the reaction. Yeah. Very emotional player. This year, he has a lot of things to have positive emotions about. He's done an excellent floor job. He's taken over a lot of the point guard duties. 43-39. A lot of contact, no whistle. Braswell in the lane over Newton. Arched it through the lead back to two. Braswell has four. Mike, you talked about Wojciechowski having to get right up in the shirt of Tony Rutland. He's done it the last couple of times. Price wants a little clear on on that side. Collins had an idea about taking a 25-footer there. Newton jump up. Another rebound goes to the All-American who has 12 on the night. Wake again with a chance to tie or take the lead. Sometimes it seems that Duncan just gets every rebound. Doesn't it? Now we've got a foul on Wallace. Uh, this is something that Dave Odom, was on number 34. that Dave Odom and Duncan have been complaining about the whole game. They feel that Wallace has been overly aggressive. He got called that time. Foul on Wallace is his second. 7:08 left to go. Right here in town. Georgetown first place in the Big East, but trailing at Pittsburgh. Didn't you criticize the Panthers' defense? They got better. You got the run, 12 to 2 run. Here's three of them right here. Goes right in. You got it. Gary Thomas. Thomas with the three. Seven point Pittsburgh lead at the break. We'll keep you posted. Mike in. All right, Chris, we were talking before the game how important it was for uh, Duke to get cranked up here. They need to get back in the conference race. And they're down at the bottom of the conference. You can see, according to that, North Carolina. Georgia Tech are tied at the top, but based on my calculations, Mike, the first place team in the ACC is UMass. They're 4 0. <laughs> yeah, they've cut a swath through the league early this year. Because they've cut a swath through everybody. Haven't they ever? It was really the one game of the year where uh, Wake Forest did not look good. I think the biggest parallel to this game is the fact that Corral oh. didn't score. And didn't look comfortable on the shot. Good entry pass to Duncan. And this foul will go on Capel. Capel helping out on the double team. That's only his second. Mike, a lot of big guys to get position. They use their arms inside. And those arms go flying around in the elbows. But Duncan doesn't use his arms. He gets his butt down and just gets the guy off of him. Using his backside and his hips. And so that's why he's not going to get called for fouls. You start throwing those elbows and using your arms inside. The referees are going to catch that. Once you set up like that, there's no way someone can reach around and knock the ball away. Duncan hits the free throw. Wake.
Lake has never led in this game. They have a chance to tie it here again. Got the bounce. 43 all. You talked about the Blue Devils responding. Let's see if they have another response in. There's a double team. They get it to Collins. This is the first time Wake has shown his track defense. Wide open for a three. Mike, the reason a lot of teams have gone away from those trapping defenses, if you can beat the trap, you get three-point opportunities. Duke got one and converted it. Bryce has nine off the bench. Duncan trying to face up on Newton and slipped inside of the jam. Nice move. Mike, you cannot give Duncan that much time. He had to go a couple of feet and a couple of dribbles to get to the basket. He's, Newton has to have help. Duncan will score 100 if they let him do that. Absolutely. Approaching the six-minute mark. Caitlin hey, Collins want to take over. Bryce has been pretty aggressive, too. Caitlin hey, with a tough shot. And a hand in his face. Here's Newton battling for the rebound and kept it alive. Bryce did a great job knocking that ball up. And here is another silly foul on Parole where he didn't move his feet enough and it ended up catching him with a knee. Tim Duncan has drawn so much attention here. This looks like they're playing one-on-one. -on -one. Nobody else in the picture. You cannot let Tim Duncan have that much time to get his shot set up. Four fouls on Ricky Peral with five minutes and 44 seconds to go. And we get another 20-second timeout. Be sure to take home a souvenir from your A lot of players, Dan, when they have that kind of shooting difficulty, end up playing defense like that, that uh, Matador Olay style for most of the night. Coming up after our ball game, the two teams who are currently tied at top of the ACC standings, North Carolina and Georgia Tech, both uh, battling tonight in Atlanta. That's a 9 o'clock start right in after our game. And I have not seen Stephon Marbury in person. I've seen him three times on television. Tremendously impressed. I've seen Antoine Jameson once in person, and I was uh, I was telling the North Carolina people, I hope they don't draft him in the middle of this year. He's a great player. Duke by one, trying to build on the lead. 5.28 to go. Mike Patrick, Dan Bonner with you from Durham. Of course, comes out in his own defense. Braswell trying to pay attention to Cable. Shot clock down to seven. Newton or Duncan waiting inside as Capel makes the drive. That was a tough shot. Yeah. Capel moving toward the basket, putting it with his left hand back behind his head. Wake with a chance to get the lead for the first time. That's the guy to go to. Corral finally gets a bucket, and Wake Forest takes the lead. Mike, and that's what we've been talking about all night. Time on that time, two. Wallace went down to help, and Peral found an open spot. 4.47 to go in the game. Wake trying to raise his record to 2-0 in the ACC. Mike Krzyzewski has seen his team lose the lead for the first time tonight. They're down by one with 4.47 to go. One of the reasons, Dan, the performance of Tim Duncan. Well, Tim Duncan doing a great job in the second half. Duke not able to get quite the defensive pressure on him. I think part of the reason is Wake Forest has started to make some of those perimeter shots. Duke hoping not to repeat history. They had big leads in their first two ACC games. Clemson and Georgia Tech blew them both. They had a big lead in the first half tonight. It's evaporated. Once the game became close, they've answered every challenge. Here's another one. Wojciechowski with a tough left-handed shot. Wallace with a rebound. Good save. Capel with a leaner. Tough shot. And Duncan nearly flat-footed with a rebound. Mike, if you're going to win games like this, you have to make good decisions. And Duke did not make good offensive decisions. Those were all bad shots that they took. Yeah, that was really a, get a good look at the basket. That was a series of bad decisions. In this league this year, it's so balanced that I think just about all games are going to come down to who makes the best decisions in the last three or four minutes of the game. There's the double team on Duncan. Turn around, jump, and miss. Oh, fouled out of the game. Fouled out of the game with his fifth silly foul of this entire game. Hit one out of five shots and had two points. This is not a game he's uh, going to want to have a videotape of to send home. 
Well, I was talking to Mac McDonald, the radio broadcaster from Wake Forest, and he said that for some reason they have different kinds of VCRs over in Europe, so Duncan can't even send tapes to his parents to watch. And I asked him, I said, they don't sell Japanese VCRs in Spain? Yeah, but it's a different uh, technical setup. It's the European standard. You can get him transferred, though, if he wants to go to the effort. <laughs> yeah, let's leave tonight out. He's had some great ball games. I wouldn't slip this one into mom and dad. 345 and counting. Wake by one. Duke with a basketball. And Wake Forest back to man to man. Behind the back to Price. That wasn't a good pass because Price ends up where he didn't want to be, right in front of Duncan anyway. Newton, great shot. Eight for Newton. Newt bounced off Duncan and created just enough room to get that one off. Pass well to Duncan down the lane. He's fouled on the way in. The basket won't count. Let's see if it's capable. And it is. One of the things you have to do when you're playing against a great shot blocker is create enough room for your shot. A little bounce with the body with the hip off Duncan gives Newton just enough room and then he converts the opportunity he created. He's had a pretty good night against uh, arguably the best defensive big man in the country and the best rebounder. Well, I, I don't think that Newton has any, can have any complaint about his game tonight. You know, you obviously, he has not played the perfect game, but how much better can he play against sure. Tim Duncan? Duncan hits the free throw. Give him five out of seven from the line and 17 points tied at 48. Duncan missed his first two free throws but like everything else he's picked up that part of his game in the second half as well. Swishes that one 49-48 Wake Forest. And down in a tight game like this night you got an option like that you can go to. This makes you awfully difficult to beat. And Wake has really picked up its defensive intensity in the last five minutes too. Collins with a kick out pass. Wait, John Zone. Capel. Big, big pass. Big three. Capel's first three tonight. Duke goes back on top by two. Couldn't have come at a better time for Mike Krzyzewski. Duncan leans in. Newton may have gotten a piece of it. And they are going to rule goal. Tending, so the basket will count. I think Newton, unfortunately for Duke, did get a piece of it while it was on the rim. That ball was coming off. Off the other side. That ball was coming off. Newton gets back into the picture, and the ball's on the rim, I think, when he got a piece of it. I'd like to see that one again. Well, okay, here you get your wish. No. It's above the cylinder. The he glass. hit it above the cylinder. Yep. If it's on the way Nine down, nine. it's goaltending. 51-51, 244 to go in the game. 244 left from Cameron Indoor Stadium. 51-51, Wake Forest and Duke. Grant Hill, I'm sure, would like uh, the lead to be about 10 or 12 so he can enjoy this one a little more. But Grant seems to be the kind of guy who's going to enjoy himself wherever he goes. Love's coming back. Talking to Coach Gay. And visiting with old friends and neighbors. He's got a great family. His mom and dad are just about as good as he gets. 2.39 left. And three ties and three lead changes late in this game. Basically a three-guard lineup most of the night for Mike Krzyzewski. Basically a 1-3-1 one, one zone look by Wake Forest. There's Price. He's free for a free pointer, and he's hit two in a row. That was against pretty good defensive pressure. Great offensive execution by Duke. Price has a dozen. The lead is back to three. And Price has done a heck of a job coming off the bench. Duncan pushes, uh, has Newton push him all the way out through the circle, then bulls his way in and scores. Mike, that's the second time we've seen Duncan go a long way dribbling the ball to the basket. They must make him give up the basketball. Newton cannot defend that by himself. 22 points for Duncan. Maybe about the only guy in the country who could is Marcus Camby, and they don't play them anymore. <laughs> that's right. Price, left hand tip, won't go. Loose ball. Braswell comes out there. Capel is back. Travel call, the ball will go back to Duke. I don't think either 
coach is going to be happy about that one. Uh, yeah, Mike Krzyzewski will be happier because Duke has the ball. Got a timeout, Duke. A minute 26 to go. The Blue Devils clinging to a one-point lead. Youth has been served at Carolina, and there again in the top ten. Georgia Tech likewise unbeaten in conference play at 2-0. A battle for early season supremacy in the ACC coming up next. That'll be a good ball game. And we've had a dandy here with Duke leading by one over Wake. And if you're Wake Forest, this is option A. And if you're Duke, <laughs> you simply cannot let Tim Duncan have three dribbles and move eight feet to the basket without giving Newton some help. Duncan has 22 points and 14 rebounds. Here's the storyline. Wake went the first 8-15 eight eight without a field goal. Duncan a much improved second half as far as scoring. Duke has made its last three three-point field goals in Capel. Has eight of his 18 in the second half. Price has chipped in with 12 for Duke off the bench. Blue Devils by one. They have the ball with 126 left in the game. Mike, we talked about option number one for Wake Forest. Jerry Braswell that time, the last Wake Forest possession, attacked the basket one on three. I think you better wait for number 21 to get parked down low before you go attacking. I would think he's option one and one A. Here's Cable Walk. Dragged the pivot foot when he got in the lane. What, you, what he needed to do, Mike, was get in there and do a jump stop. He tried to stop without jumping because I think he felt like maybe he could make a play in the middle. You get in the middle, Duncan's going to be there. Just pitch it out to somebody else. One minute left. The joint is jumping. they got to get him some help. Dan says here's option one. Forget it. Newton cannot guard the man one-on-one. -on -one. And that's no criticism of Newton. He's oh, no. the best he can. He's playing his heart out. He's playing maybe the best player in the country. Wake leads by one. Price has done some damage lately. He gets caught in the lane. Collins can't hit the runner. LaRue just covers up. 25 seconds to go, and they foul Rutland. That's probably a good choice because LaRue may be the best free, free throw shooter in the country. Rutland has hit only 12 out of 14. At least they made LaRue give it up. Again, Wojciechowski runs away following Rutland, and there's nobody else there. You have to get down and help out against Tim Duncan. It's amazing, Dan, as many times as this has happened in the second half, how nobody has come to help in a defense that prides itself on giving help. Well, what... Wake Forest has done some really good things offensively sure. to get the defenders out of the way and make it difficult to come and help. 24.8 seconds to go. Wake by one at Duke. Wake Forest by a point with under 25 seconds to go. Duke has led most of the way here. Here's the reset. Uh, one timeout for each team. From now on, we'll be in the bonus for both clubs. Dave Odom has had his team win six straight against Duke, three in a row here in this vaunted building. Love to get a fourth in a row. That would raise his ACC record to two in a row. Against Florida State, Mike. Wake Forest missed three front end of the one and ones down the stretch. One of the reasons why that game went to overtime. Rutland came in shooting 12 and 24. He's still at 50% for the year now, 13 of 26. The lead is two. Even if he makes it, it's still a one possession game. He has 15 points tonight. But if he makes it, that puts the pressure on Duke to get a three. <laughs> and that's exactly what they'll need unless they want to go for the two and then try the foul again. If they're going to go for the two, they got to go for the two very quick in a hurry. The biggest lead of the night for Wake is three. Collins to tie. Here's Price with a rebound. Tries to put it back up, knocked out of bounds. Well, Mike, they still have time. 11.7, plenty of time to get a good shot. And they've got the three-point shooters in there. Price has done well, so has Capel, so has Collins. Capel wide open to tie, it won't go. And the rebound to Jackson, hacked immediately by Collins. And Dan, it looks like another close game could slip away from the Blue Devils. 
which is something that started to happen to them last year when Mike Krzyzewski fell ill. Timeout, wait for us. Got a timeout for the Deacons with 7.1 seconds to go. And Dan, I have seen so many times so far this year in situations just like this, teams are inbounding the ball and somehow the worst free throw shooter on the entire team <laughs> ends up with it. Now, how can that happen? Well, you guard everybody else if you're the defense. When you're in a, when you're in a late game situation, you really feel, I think, as a player, the pressure a little bit more. You want to get the ball in bounds, and you're not really thinking about, well, I'm not going to throw it to Joe over there because he's a 20% free throw shooter. The first jersey that you see that's the same color as yours that's open, you throw him the ball. What coaches used to do was take five guys who shot free throws well, regardless of position, and put them out there. Right, that's right, but coaches don't have five guys who shoot <laughs> free throws right. well anymore. Yeah, they're lucky if they have one. The last 24 ACC games, look at the turnaround, 5 and 19. Before that, 18 and 6. They've been hurt uh, by a couple of straight recruiting classes and a couple of injuries. Now, this is a one and one, Mike, and he's only a 45% free throw shooter, is Antonio Jackson. Has four points tonight, has hit both his free throws. Game still alive. Domzowski with a rebound to Capel. He hit a big one against Carolina in this situation last year. Lost it on the layup. Wake Forest wins 57 to 54. That is quite a comeback, Dan, for the Deacons. They did not play well in the first half. Duke was outplaying them. They had the momentum, and Wake came down in crunch time and found a way to get it done. Wake Forest did an excellent job defensively against Jeff Capel on the last shot. Capel never really had the opportunity to get a run at the basket. And what you'd like to set up is you, you'd like Capel to shoot over your biggest guy and watch where Tim Duncan positions himself. He finds Capel, just moves his feet and stays in front of him. Capel was going to have a tough time getting that ball off over top of Duncan, and he knows it. He sees Duncan there, and he just loses the ball on the way up. That's tremendous defense by Wake Forest. Mike Krzyzewski obviously very disappointed with the end of this game. His team played very, very hard. You can see he knows how close they came. A tremendous defensive effort early in the game put them in position where they could win the basketball game, but they just weren't able to convert down at the end when they needed to. Duke falls to 0-3 in the conference. Wake Forest, the eighth-ranked team in the country, goes to 2-0. For Dan Bonner and our entire ESPN crew, this is Mike Patrick. Thanks for watching, everybody. Let's go back to Chris Fowler. Chris? All right, guys, thanks. We're standing by for the second half of our ACC doubleheader. Stephon Marbury on the right, Vince Carter. They know each other from the ABCD camps over the years. Now they're freshmen in the ACC. They are set to do battle. That game coming up in just a few minutes. In the meantime, Digger, Duke, with another close loss, drops to 0-3 in the ACC. They have to go at Virginia Saturday, so it just gets tougher. Well, you get Clemson, you get Georgia Tech, and now tonight they have a double-figure lead in the first half, and, and that's hard to do. Coach K knows what they have to do. The kids just don't come through when it counts, but Tim Duncan, I mean, he rebounds, he gets assists, and he played the defense at the end. Capel can't get the shot off. Wake Forest waits seven minutes for their first points, eight minutes for their first field goal, 40 minutes, almost 40 minutes before their first lead, but they come away with the three-point victory. Other games going on tonight. Purdue and Northwestern are playing right now on ESPN2. This is a series that has been thoroughly dominated by Purdue over the years, and that's no change tonight. 53-34, the Boilermakers have the lead. 12-33 to play. I'm not saying get the clicker out, but the game is going on ESPN2. <laughs> it's not that close right now. Virginia and Clemson are playing. Clemson trying to preserve the undefeated record. A one-point lead over Virginia. This game a very sluggish start. They went more than five minutes without scoring. Right now, midway first half. And the Cavs, the next opponent for Duke, as I mentioned, trailing Clemson, but only by one point. UMass in the game postponed from last night by the Blizzard. They got a battle from St. Joe's throughout. Right now, they're trying to hold on to a six-point lead in the final 30 seconds as they try